Extreme Dinosaurs was a sequel series from Street Sharks. Near the end of the final season, a group of dinosaurs were introduced called the Dino Avengers, helping out the sharks on and off till they had captured Paradine in the series finale. Lots of things changed between the two shows. The origin stories plus the horrible title were the big ones. Originally, the Dino Avengers and Raptors were aliens from another world who wanted to take over Earth with the Avengers trying to stop the Raptors. This made no sense. Why would Earth dinosaurs be on other planets? It could have worked if Earth never had dinosaurs in this universe, but there were episodes showing bones, museums, people said the word dinosaurs. So that means Earth and this unknown planet had the same type of animal. That thankfully was chucked in the bin when they got the series. The alien stuff was kept, but integrated in a better way, and it explains a lot of things you'd question normally. An alien race called the Quadranians, who are from another dimension, similar to humans, just blue skin and tall, appeared on Earth. Argo Zardok, a bad guy, but not really a focus to the series, is on the run from his people. He's trying to make an army to take over his home planet, the usual thing. He stumbles on Earth 65 million years ago during the dinosaur age. He sees the dinosaurs as weapons, captures four of them, mutates slash evolves, and increases their intelligence to basically understand Quadranian tech, giving birth to our heroes. I'm T-Bone. This is Stegs, Spike, and Bullseye. The names and personalities remain the same from before, but everyone has new voices. Ian Corlett, originally voiced T-Bone, is now done by Scott McNeil. I'm T-Bone. This is Stegs, Spike, and Bullseye. But because he gave them too much free will, they didn't want to help him kill people. Not a chance. Out of the question. Forget it. Thanks to Street Sharks being a decent success, Extreme got a bigger budget, plus the actors acted better. There's still the comedy bits you expect, but more care is done in the delivery. Check it out, a talking dinosaur. Hey, I'm talking too. They pretty much have the same abilities from the Street Sharks, very strong, can stomp the ground and cause quakes. The only new addition is Stegs took some power-ups from Sonic the Hedgehog. Since they were goody two-shoes, Argo just chucked them. Deciding Raptors would be a better choice, plus making them less smart, creating bad rap, hacks, and spitter. Gary Chalk, who originally voiced Spike, now voices bad rap. Dynamite, ready for battle. Well done, oh, very well done. Other voices of note, Spitter was Cutman and Hacks voiced Vile in the Ruby Spears Mega Man series. No, stop! I'll freeze up here. As compensation for being more dumb, Argor gave the Raptors more physical enhancements. Bad Rap has a reinforced jaw with a rocket arm launcher, although in the first episode it could dissolve matter. The artist didn't want to design a different weapon, so he just has the same weapon after it gets blown up for the rest of the series. Why they couldn't just make a different weapon, especially when you could sell another toy for that, I don't get. Spitter uses a tank that could shoot out different liquids ranging from acid to glue. In some episodes, it's ketchup and hot sauce. Hax has the most physical upgrades. He gains holographic arm blades with a motorized drill tail just like Dragon Sword. Following after Argo is Chedra Bodzak. She works for the Quadranian Police Force. Very uptight with rules and regulations from her law book. Every little thing you do wrong, she'll quote your ear off. Halt! Oversized wild beasts are not permitted to eat Quadranian security forces. So the raptors, of course, target her ship. This is where the show gets creative. Because of them being from a different dimension, their weapons devastate Earth, causing the planet-wide extinction of the dinosaurs. Argo flees, while Chedra is forced to remain in protecting the extreme dinos because they're now considered civilians, pulling at Transformers, cryo-freezing themselves until rescue, with the raptors sneaking in at the last minute. Jumping 65 million years to the present, the ship gets undercovered by an archaeologist, so they gotta deal with the new world being last of their kind, and Rebecca Scarwell trying to experiment on them. She's been capturing aliens and other weird creatures for her menagerie, and the raptors' new goal is to get the planet hotter by doing all sorts of crazy things. Volcanic eruptions, chemical meltdowns, carbon dioxide buildup, you, you get the picture. What are the improvements compared to the last series? Street Sharks had two allies last time. That didn't work out well because everyone overlapped in skill. So this time, Chedra and Porcupine Duvall don't have anything in common. Duvall owns the Dinosaur Museum that becomes their home base. He's basically the 
old timer that does the repair work and comes up with the dinos hover cars. He doesn't even get phased by them because he's seen all the alien sightings that Scarwell captures nearby. The biggest change is the raptors. Last time, Dr. Paradigm was the only real villain that got developed. The monsters that helped him were just there. The raptors all have personalities and stories for the show. I'm going to warm this place up. Make it raptor friendly. It's also easier to follow extreme overall. There's no forgotten storylines like the shark's dad. Just hide and save the planet. And they go around the world, so they aren't in the same locations much. There's also only one new dinosaur added later, Hard Rock. He was from an alternate universe that had dinosaurs rule the planet, but they did add different kinds of human allies and villains to fill in the gaps, including a Mighty Max-like character, Prince H. Extreme improves in a lot of stuff, but in others, they did fall short. It did get more episodes, 52 compared to 40, that ran in one year, but it didn't get any actual ending. Most episodes aired out of production order, but it would have been nice if Chedra was able to get back home in the end. That's another big oof. We got hardly anything about the Quadranians in general. We never got to see their planet. All we know is that they're normally not solid, and Chedra didn't get expanded on past the whole recite the book rules and be cool. Even when she was a kid, she's always wanted to be a police officer, so there's no other extra details even there. I mean, she's always in the episodes, helps on the tech side, and flies a ship, but that's really it. Bar one episode where a scientist likes her. If you had a problem with Street Sharks being too corny and you couldn't watch the show because of that, Extreme is a lot better. They do take a lot of elements from Lost World Jurassic Park and did get some really joke-heavy episodes like the Extreme Files, the one where they have FBI agents Molly and Skulder infiltrate Waswell, and a 007 episode. But overall, feels more modern. Something that would come out of the original Ben 10 or the Jackie Chan cartoon. Give this one a try. It's one of the few series I really like both hero and villains equally. The Raptors aren't overly annoying. They got the funny and menacing balance. The episodes also feature each of the four dinosaurs. With the Street Sharks in the previous series being very similar in personality, there was no real reason to have solo episodes for them. These guys are all different, so they got focus episodes just like in TMNT. Now, only the Netherlands and Australia released the series on DVD so far. I say go for the Netherlands release. They actually cared in a quality release. Each of the volumes got original artwork, while Australia had everything the same. And to save on discs, they did the annoying encode one opening and ending, so the disc does a lot of loading and seeking. The episodes are also presented in original production order. The only thing that sucked was that it ran only a year. It really needed another season. It could have just been 13 episodes. They could get a basic ending. And Chedra really needed more episodes to her. I think they could have continued the universe with all kinds of other animals. Then could have had special team-up episodes featuring the Street Sharks, the Extreme Dinosaurs, and any other season they would have done. Be like Power Rangers in some cases. I think Mattel missed an opportunity with this. Thanks for checking out the review. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.